Welcome to the Rudolph Show. This is Rudy Reyes. Thank you very much for tuning in. On this election Sunday, 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 Sunday. Everybody's been waiting for this. And of course, Selection Sunday could not get any better than with my next guest. So of course, you guys, it's also baseball season. I am a Pirates fan. Uh, I, I do not have to apologize. No luck. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to apologize for the very next guest uh, that I have here on the show. And the reason why I don't need to apologize is because A, it's my show. B, I don't need to. And I'm going to see my way out of this and welcome in the Australian sensation from down under. The Western Crusader linebacker who will make you wish you were never born on the field. Welcome. The one. The only Kenneth Bennett at Mr. Underscore Big Hit on Twitter soon to be a big hit here in Southern California at the Rams and Chargers meeting the Dr. Keister and Guinness. Sky phone call. Welcome to the show. How are you, Kenneth? I'm doing great, man. I'm having a good day. How are you doing? Oh, man, I am fantastic. I, you know, it's a little rainy here in Southern California. Of course, you're no stranger to that because that's where you're from. You're familiar with the Southern California area you're from. Um, the same method of the woods that I am, oddly enough, and that is San Bernardino. California. Most people probably don't know where that is. Uh, and hello for all the terrorists of love here. Hashtag modern family. Uh, hashtag the Rudolph show. I'm live on uh, Facebook as well as on Terrorist. So I'm kind of double dipping here today. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Kenneth, you have been out of the country for quite some time here on this election Sunday. And of course, it'd be more than adequate to suggest that uh, being here in Southern California may need to be your best uh, legal hit yet. If the Rams and or Chargers were to pick you up, because all it takes is a phone call. So it's Selection Sunday. I'm selecting the Rams to contact you, give you a call, and say, we want you to come down and talk to us. What do you think is going to happen on Selection Sunday? Do you think we get that call soon? I'm hoping I do. I'm just looking for an opportunity. Might call me, you know, just having an opportunity to talk with you. Let me just let them know what they're, what they're needing or on the team with Needing as a linebacker, so I can show them. Well, you, I, I know this much. Akeem Tlaib, uh, basically taking over uh, in the Broncos' backfield, no longer there last year. Now with the Los Angeles Rams, and now he finds himself in a situation where he can use somebody right next to him on that line to get it done. And I think he could be that guy to help get that done. When, when you look at when you look at the Australian football league, which played with the so much, uh, I feel like I podcast the viewers as well. well as the Periscope. Uh, but when you give your all to a team like the Western Crusaders, what is Australian football like? Everybody has this, this, this myth about they're not oh, hard or they don't know how to play or it's their own, own American, uh, their own version of what American football actually is. What is so different between Australian football and American football? First thing what I don't know is really not a difference. It's just what us, the conversation is a little bit different. We get to play middle to, to uh, high school and college. That's the only difference. But they actually have good players down there. Like they have some players that could come over here and play. So they do have a good competition. Just depends where you're at. No, you're in a division where there are a lot of other solid teams. I mean, do they, is, is the penalties the same? Is the touchdown the same? I mean, what kind of similarities are there between Australian football and American football? What are the parallels? Well, they, they go. They go on basic rules that we go up because, you know, they, they want to make their football as much as Americans. So, touchdowns, field goals, everything's the same. Okay, well, well there you go then. So, when, when we talk about you being the Australian sensation, that, that's a hashtag, by the way, hashtag Australian sensation. We got a here on, on Periscope and Facebook Live, of course. Um, but when we look at you being the Australian sensation, what makes you so sensational in Australia? Done something that you're accustomed to doing, something that you just enjoy doing. Now, when, when I look at 
the needs of a lot of different teams in the NFL, of course, not just because of the Rams. Obviously. That's just because they're local. What interest uh, have you been getting from NFL teams since you've been back in the States? Um, no, no answers yet, but you know, you know the space station, you know. So, think of them out here, talk to people again. So, whatever happens, you just can't, you gotta keep staying on it. Well, it's really about persistence. You, amongst you know, every other draftee, and I interviewed a young gentleman yesterday uh, uh, who hasn't had any, uh, any NFL experience. He's heading into the 2018 NFL draft. If, if you had a message for all those up and coming guys, because you've been playing ball for a while, what would your message be to those guys trying to climb into the ranks of getting into the NFL? My best word of advice to them is. You know, wherever you play is politics. You have different things going on. You can't give up. You got to keep going. Because you know, just because this linebacker is an opportunity doesn't mean that somebody's going to see you. So you got to keep going. You can't let nothing because it's going to be things that's going to go on. But you can't let it stop you from trying to fulfill your career or dream. So you got to keep going after it. I, I couldn't agree more. And, and, and to add to that, I'm going to say that you have to be persistent. You have to stay. You have to show that you want it. You have to be. In, you have to be hungry. You have to be passionate about what you do. Otherwise, that's why I do it. And I think that that's a message that, that can be said and put out out there. Everybody needs to know that it's not a big secret. So, speaking of no secrets at all, because we're very transparent, you were raised in Dort, in California. I not too far away from where you were at. You were there until you were ten. That was interesting. When I, when I read, when I read the Bible, and you had said that. Uh, you want to move to something safe, and that's San Francisco. That's myself. Wait, you're kidding, right? Uh, that's San Francisco, California. If people don't know where that is, it's in the orbit of outside of Los Angeles. Uh, in freeway, uh, in the Illinois Empire. It was a reception. You would have to be in the Empire. But you said it was safe. It's San Francisco. And I'm laughing because that the area around it is like. It was very bad. It was very bad. It was 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 bad. That it was safer to move there than even within Dorney. Uh, uh, what I thought was safer, you know, it's a little bit different. It's not, it's not too hot to, to me. It's not too hot to like LA, LA County. So when, when we moved here, I was. No issues or no problems with nothing. So a little bit different. Well, I, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. That's where you're at in San Francisco, right? Because we all know the North End is the best and everything else is just kind of there. So because we grew up in a very similar area, we, we, we went through, we, we discussed this from time to time, that it was a um, different area, different times. I'm a little bit older. You're obviously a lot younger. Uh, but, but more importantly, we, we share the same area. And of course, you're going to have a very idea about moving to the North End, which is probably the best thing you could have done. And then on top of that, you I didn't want to borrow like a real size. I was right down the street from her, literally. And when, when I say, and you, and you can verify this, that on Rialto Avenue, uh, uh, or excuse me, Mill. So on Mill, if you go down the hill, you turn left on Ring, and, and there's a school. By the elementary school, I lived up the hill. And then down the hill. So I said, walk up the hill to school, both directions. I was not lying. I was not lying, because he did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you walk uphill and then you go down. Downhill. But you're on the uphill climb though, because here comes UCLA. They send you a full scholarship invitation, which is fantastic. Uh, what was it about receiving that scholarship? I mean, what was going through your mind right then and there when you heard that that scholarship was available? Uh, growing up, that was my favorite school, so it was just an uh, opportunity. You know, getting letters, getting this, getting that. So it was a blessing, you know, that you wanted to go to, you're able to get the letter in. And, you know, if you want to go or not. But did you feel the key? I mean, it's not as if you were um, this big, gigantic, you know, division one superstar, but you received a scholarship. That's huge. A lot of players don't get that. A lot of players, I've interviewed, didn't get that. A lot of them have went to D2, went that route. They even went to JUCO. And AIA. 
They did everything they could, went every direction they could have possibly gone to in order to get to the next level. So was it as if all the hard work paid off receiving a scholarship from UCLA? Yeah, I feel like all the hard work paid off. I made sure that I did everything possible in high school to be on top of my game. Well, not only personally, but academically as well. I mean, you don't get a full scholarship because you're great at football, but you're horrible in the classroom. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, so that didn't quite take hold. You had some family issues, some serious problems you had to contend with. How was it being able to, I mean, gosh, you're on such a high receiving scholarship. Now you're on such a low because you can't, you, you, you can go, you can do it. What was about putting everything on hold? It was all your family situation that made you want to still be able to drive to continue your career in hopes of getting a shot in the NFL? Uh, you know, it, it was hard to, to understand that. You know, sometimes you have to put your family first. But I never, like, I never had to spread my head. I wanted to know, you get it. I'm going to get back to my football, so I didn't look at it with that. They looked at it like, In, in life is, is a reflection of, of what you do with that. So if you learn about something, you learn about what you want to do, you learn about what it takes to move aside from the problems, the issues, uh, and to be able to really focus. So you had to redirect your focus. And again, that focus was to go to San Valley College. Now, again, another place where you live down the street. For more, <laughs> so here's Mel. Yeah. <laughs> so Mel and, and Mel going down the other direction towards downtown San Bernardino. So, so San Bernardino Valley College is built on Melbourne uh, Avenue. And it's very big. big. It's actually pretty decent campus. Really is. So, so you went to San Bernardino Valley College. What was it like? What was the Valley College experience like? Did you feel like once you were there that? You're calling, then you can do much more damage and be the, the player that people thought you were on top of where you thought you'd be. But more importantly, that you'd be able to see like your summer scouts as if they had seen you see like. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was way different, right? That's what like. The coaches were, were doing all the players, and a lot of them were playing with you. I played there, so it was a comfortable and, you know, you had a good season when I was there. Well, having a good season is, is great because not only were you able to execute and show others what you're capable of, but you also did your best to make sure you got everything back on track. And it takes a while because you have to get acclimated to a different system, different environment, different coaches, different players, and yet you have to find that that happens. You know, where do I land? Where do I set? Where am I at, at the depth on this roster? Am I going to be the number one guy? And with that, you found a way to uh, uh, become an office linebacker. Uh, you received another scholarship, a full scholarship, again, to Evangelical College. I uh, became a two-time owner in a preseason and a defense. So MVP, again, you're climbing the trust regardless of circumstances that were in your way. What was it about getting to that level where, again, Going back to where you were, you received that scholarship to UCLA, you had it turned down, and now you're going to a different direction, but still being able to shine in front of people that you need to shine in front of. What was that like? Man, it was, it was crazy. Not knowing the outcome, and then once you figure out that you're actually on top of your game, it just come natural, but in the same sense. You gotta keep pushing yourself and working hard because if you don't work hard, you're not gonna get so good results like that. So with those results, and this is kind of what I was alluding to, with those results, our team's finding a way to look at results. And if you look at the lead nationwide. Right, so you have teams from coast to coast, up and down, north to south, east to west. And you look at the situation where a lot of teams need 
experience. They need guys who have you know, good first step, good hand, eye coordination, have good feet. Inside, uh, be able to pass rush. Um, and when I look at all the things that what, what makes up an NFL player, you have those qualities. You have those intangibles. I mean, you have to come because you want to sell the bench. You have to come on there because you do. So now, here you are in a situation where you want to get looked at by an NFL team. You haven't received a ton of issues, but hopefully that will change. And hopefully by being on the show, that will also change. And I will certainly do my part to help. Make sure NFL teams like the Rams, the Chargers, the Oakland Raiders, uh, uh, the Denver Broncos, because they don't have a team to leave. Now, possibly you can fill that role in Denver. I've watched a lot of your film. You have a good first step. You're fast off the line, you apply the pressure. I, I really believe that whatever you learn in Australia, whatever you learn here, all the experience accumulatively will translate into being an NFL pass rusher. And I think NFL teams need to really look at that. If you don't know who Kenneth Bennett is, go to the huddle and type in the word Kenneth Bennett and you'll certainly find him. I mean, it's a, it's a catchy name. I'll be honest with you. Kenneth Bennett. I mean, it makes it makes sense. Why would you not want to call this guy's name on a roster? The Australian sensation, Kenneth Bennett. I mean, it just kind of rolls. You know, it's kind of like needing dough, right? You want to make biscuits or whatever. You know, it's a Kenneth Bennett Australian sensation. It just, it, it just works. So give, give NFL team right now. Logic. As to why they should contact you. Right, so you can't have excuses and expect to be elite. It doesn't matter. It makes no difference what happened yesterday, but all that matters is today and right now. And I, I think based on what you've experienced in your life, the, the, the types of things that you've gone through, having to put things on hold, taking care of family first, uh, being able to look past all of those obstacles that have been in your way for a very long time, now find yourself in a situation. All you need is one opportunity, one chance. And I think that you'll certainly get that chance. I hope you get that chance because teams could be sleeping on a guy like you moving forward in the 2018 NFL draft. I really do. Yes, yeah, you're correct about that. I mean, you can run, you can cover, you can tackle in a textbook fashion, you stay consistent, you're very, you're very persistent. Have that, you know, that, that goal line stance where you apply the pressure, you put a swim move on somebody, you get to the quarterback, you either strip them or sack them. There has to be something that anybody can say. Even I can say, man, that's fantastic. That's exactly what he's done his entire career. I think you do it in the NFL. I really do. I think so. I think NFL teams would be very remiss if they forgot about you. I really do. Wait on the call, and while that's transpired, while that's taking place, what is it about off-field off activities that has you ready to go? So at a moment's notice, what have you been doing? You've been working out, yoga, water exercises, a parachute in the back of you. What have you been doing to keep yourself ready to go? Uh, running, going to the gym. Uh, I watch them on a lot of different Different type of linebacker, NFL, just like seeing what type of style they have. I try to implement it, like different type of things that I can learn from them and just staying ready, you know, doing linebacker drills, just making sure they're ready for it. When it's time to go, so just preparing myself, you never know when the time is. No, you never know, ever. And that's, that's the best part of all because you never know. But I think that you're. Or that you're about to. And I think everybody. All, all NFL coaches, position coaches, head coaches, general managers, 
Take a look at Kenneth Bennett. You have nothing to lose by looking at him, at least bringing him in, having the conversation. Okay, put him on the field, and let's see what he can do. I think it's all about action. The words mean nothing. Unless you have action to back it up, period. You're right. That's all there is to it. I call it like it is. Kenneth, thank you so much for joining the show. I, I wish the best for you. I hope the NFL team contacts you. And if there's anything I can do for you in the meanwhile, please let me know. Uh, I will send this out on the show.com. Will be posted there. The video will be posted there, as well as those uh, viewers on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for, for joining here this afternoon on the Rudolph Show, Kenneth. Uh, if, if there was one thing that you could say to an NFL team and give the reason why they should pick you up, go for all the NFL teams out there. That listen to this middle for linebacker. We're getting somebody that's all in and a complete player, and looking to just. Add, add more more of a linebacker to your defense that it will give you a chance and a defender to win a championship every year. That's what everything you need to do. You need to put your linebacker to make sure that if I said it's going to die, I can give you that. I could have said it. I'm better myself. Of course, I'm not a linebacker, but I, I do know how to talk to the mic very well, so maybe that's my, maybe that's my other choice. Wait, so I'm not going to sack my mic. So it's on the same word should be. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. We will we'll be in touch. All right, thank you. No problem. Hey, thanks for tuning in. special Sunday selection. Tim Rodasho with Kenneth the Australian sensation, defensive back, and linebacker. This guy can do all of the field. Just needs an opportunity. This is Rudy Rasmus Rudasho. Have a great selection Sunday.